Hello. Good day to all my Form 4 students. Today we are here to look at Chapter 2, Form 4. The chapter is called The Structure of Atom, Part 1. And teacher going to discuss on matter, kinetic theory of matter, the meaning of diffusion, changes of matter, and also heating and cooling curve of a substance. Now, let's go to the meaning of matter. I understand that students have previous knowledge to the meaning of matter. Matter is anything, okay, defined as anything that occupies space and has mass. Has mass. Occupies space okay so it occupies space and they are tiny and discrete particles tiny and discrete particles okay so teacher repeat matter is defined as anything that has mass that can occupy space and also has consists of tiny and discrete particles. Here, teacher would like to highlight what is meant by particles. So, particles is made up of atom, molecule or ions. Okay. So, atoms are only one type of atom, just one type of atom. So, teacher explain very briefly why because i understand students have previous knowledge regarding this subtopic all right okay now so atom is just one type of atom no combination of other different type of element okay so what is one type of element molecule can consist of two or more atoms or two or more type different types of atoms meaning for instance molecule can be Chlorine. Chlorine is consist of two chlorine atoms. Oxygen consists of two oxygen atoms. So this is just the reason why it is called chlorine molecule, oxygen molecule. Now water, H2O. Can you see that it consists of a different type of element called hydrogen and oxygen? So that is the reason why this is also called a molecule. Even though they have different type of elements combined in it. Okay, now let's go to ions. Ions are actually sub, sub, uh, substances which are made up of charges, positive and negative charges. For instance, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is a substance which contains positively and negatively charged elements. Okay, positively and negatively charged uh, substances, which is elements which are called sodium sodium ion and chloride ion in this matter. Now, what happens is in solid state, okay, in solid state, solid state, it is, does not, they does not move. But when the same sodium chloride, you dilute in water, the ions can move, freely move. So, that is the reason why ions can move freely in uh, aqueous or molten state. But in solid state, they can't move freely, even though the ions are there, but they can't uh, react. Okay, now, so let's go to matter, consists of three types of matter, which is solid, liquid, and gas. Okay, so these are the three types of matter. Now, I want students to understand the difference between particles and matter. Okay, now see, huh? so what I meant here is sodium chloride. The particles inside sodium chloride are ions. Sodium chloride in the form of solid. So, if students understand sodium chloride, which is stable salt, sodium chloride is in the form of solid. And this sodium chloride consists of ions. Chlorine is in a form of gas. The state of matter is gas. And chlorine is a molecule, consists of molecule. So this is what I want students to understand. 
Now, let's go to kinetic theory of matter. Kinetic theory of matters, I want students to understand that kinetic theory is actually talking about movement. Okay, so kinetic theory of matter states that all matter is made up of tiny particles. Tiny particles move continuously and randomly. Okay, and movement T factor affected by E. Okay, so here tiny particles. So kinetic theory of matter says that all matter are consists of tiny particles which continuously and randomly move. They move continuously and randomly. That means they are forever. For instance, for solid, okay, uh, uh, solid, the particles are continuously vibrating and rotating in their own position. Okay, so that is what we mean by continuously moving. Okay, and the movement is affected by heat. Definitely, the kinetic energy possessed by the atom Okay, the, the matter, okay, the particles in the matter totally depends on the amount of heat supplied to it. So, this is what students need to understand. Now, let thanks to kinetic theory of matter, we can prove, okay, we can prove that matter go through diffusion, okay, a process called diffusion. So, diffusion is where the matter, okay, the matter will diffuse. Different type of matter diffuse amongst each other. Okay, they don't separate any of the molecules or components, but they will diffuse among each other. For instance, for instance, when you add sodium chloride, when you add sodium chloride in water, this is a type of diffusion also where the sodium chloride particle will diffuse amongst water molecule okay without reacting just diffuse amongst water molecule or a substance called potassium manganate 7 when you put potassium manganate solid potassium manganate in a liquid called water we can find the particles of potassium manganate 7 the purple particles of potassium manganate 7 diffuses inside the between the molecule amongst the molecule of water. Alright. Without chemically reacting. Now, if we say this diffusion totally depends on the space. Among space in matter. Okay. For instance, we know that. For instance, we know that sodium, chlor sodium chloride is a solid. So, can you see there is no space at all. So that is the reason why diffusion is very slow in solid compared to liquid compared to gas. So it is easier for gas to for diffusion to happen in gas. Okay, in gas. And the hardest is to for the diffusion to happen in solid. So that is the reason why if your mother is cooking in the kitchen. You can smell, okay, you can smell the cooking from, okay, in the hall. If you're sitting in hall or the porch, you can smell the cooking from the kitchen in the hall. Why? Because the particles of the particles can diffuse faster in air. The same goes to the use, usage of perfume, okay, usage of the perfume. Why? The particles of gas diffuses faster in air. Gas. Why? Because gas has the arrangement of molecule. Can you see the space between them? The space between the gas is bigger. Con compared to the space, the space in solid. Solid does not have much space. Okay, they don't have almost space, no space amongst the particles at all. So that is the reason why it is very hard for the other molecules to diffuse. Liquid will be moderate. Why? Because there will be still a bit of, okay, there will be still a bit of a space in between of the 
particles all right okay now so let's go to change in state of matter these also students have seen before or studied before so let's connect this and this okay movement of matter movements of particle of matter totally depends on the amount of heat supplied so which is very true for instance if you want to change a state of matter from solid to liquid you just it is called melting okay so let's look at here melting now in order to go through melting we have to heat it up heat is absorbed okay so heat is absorbed when a solid is melting into a liquid okay now that means we have to heat up the substance in order for the substance to melt so the substance the particle is actually absorbing heat okay the particle is absorbing heat only then they can become the change the state of matter to liquid now if if it's if a gas wants to become liquid which is condensation okay so we can say heat released okay now this is important why because when heat is absorbed when heat is absorbed okay so force of attraction low becomes low that means uh, when heat is absorbed the force of attraction between the particles becomes lower why because the the atoms or the particles are getting further and further apart can you see the atoms of the particles are getting further and further apart so thanks to the heat absorbing okay thanks to the heat absorbing process the force of attraction becomes lower now let's uh make it opposite heat released when heat is released force of attraction increases okay so force of attraction increases for instance when we want to condensation when we want to go through condensation from gas can you see from liquid can you see the now the space is getting nearer and from liquid to solid which is freezing we can see that the space is getting nearer. Can you see it gets nearer? Why? Because the force of attraction is being produced and that's the reason why the molecules or the particles gets nearer to each other. Now, let's go to, so for you to understand further, let me explain about heating curve and cooling curve. Okay, for instance, teacher use the substance called naphthalene. Okay, so naphthalene actually melts at the temperature of 78 degrees Celsius. Now, I am here to explain to students what happens during a melting process. Okay, now, so can we see that the graph does not start at zero? Why? Because this is room temperature. So, please remember that graph will never start the heating curve graph will never start at zero why because it's room temperature okay so room temperature for hours is usually like 30 degrees like that all right okay so what happens is that a particles absorb heat okay the particles will start absorbing heat so can we see that the heat is the temperature is increasing and when it comes to point b okay they will start to melt Okay, when come to point B, at point B, the substance naphthalene, solid naphthalene will start melting. And that is the reason why from B to C, the combination of the matter from B to C is solid plus liquid. Okay, teacher repeat the comp at B to C, sorry B to C, the combination of matter here is solid plus liquid. Why? Because the substance has started to melt and if we want to ask why from point b to c the temperature does not increase there's a reason why because why temperature does not increase is heat absorbed is used to 
break force of attraction between particles okay heat absorbed is used to break the force of attraction force of attraction between particles okay so teacher repeat ah huh? at point b the substance naphthalene will start to melt so when it's melting the temperature remains constant why heat is absorbed heat absorbed is used to break the force of attraction between the particles and please remember when coming to point c all of the naphthalene has melted so this is the reason why from c to d all of them are liquid okay from c to d all the naphthalene particles are in form of uh, let naphthalene the form of liquid and if you further heat it up the naphthalene will turn into gas okay so i hope students can understand now let's reverse the process which is cooling curve if heating is heat absorbed cooling shows heat is released cooling shows heat is released so let's go to point p okay point p heat released okay so heat is released at point q start freezing okay so since it's cooling curve just say it's a liquid naphthalene just say if it's a liquid naphthalene heat released from here to here is in a form of liquid and when it comes to q it starts freezing because the opposite of melting is freezing so it start freezing that means from point q to r the combination of the substance or the matter is actually liquid plus solid teacher repeat liquid plus solid because now since from q to r it has started to melt the combination of state of matter is liquid and solid and at r all of them have started freezed okay all of them have freezed all the particles have you know have uh, freezed now the next question why the graph is constant from q to r from q to r why the temperature is constant so the freezing point is also 78 degrees celsius now why it is constant why it is constant heat released is equal to heat of the surrounding meaning the heat released to form the force of attraction between the particles okay when heat release force of attraction between the particles increase that means they are trying to form a bond okay a force of attraction that means the particles are getting nearer and nearer so what happens is the heat released is equal to the heat of the surrounding so that is the reason why the heat the temperature does not increase sorry decrease when cooling curve okay and i want you all to remember that at r all the substance naphthalene has freezed into solid state and from here they will be solid okay from here they will be solid so that is the reason why naphthalene freeze at 78 degrees then if you continue it will at room at room temperature the naphthalene will be continue to be a solid state so i hope student can understand what teacher have explained in my next video of the structure of atom part 2 teacher will explain regarding um, development of atomic model and also uh, sub atomic particles which is very important on how to calculate proton number nucleon number and also write the symbol of elements okay so i hope you students can understand teachers video and explanation see you all in the next part till then thank you for watching take care